It's a question that's been asked for generations. What is the best way to parent your kids? Yeah, from the seen and not heard style of the silent generation to the baby boomers taking the tactic of do whatever you want <laughs> and the more recent helicopter parenting by millennials. The parenting pendulum has swung wildly between authoritarian and permissive in the last few decades alone. So what do the experts say now? For more, let's cross to parenting educator Lyle Stone. Great to have you with us. So um, we're obviously, we've tried a whole lot of different things over the years. Uh, what do those older parenting styles apparently get wrong? Well, I think we firstly have to start with our parents, grandparents were doing the best they, they, they could at the time with the information that they had. I mean, there was a lot of beautiful things that happened when we were kids and, and the way we were raised. But I think what we have to, I guess, what we've come to learn is really, I think, the elements around emotional awareness and emotional intelligence perhaps were really missing. So for many of us, we were told, you know, don't cry, don't get upset or just kind of be in that stoic state. Whereas really, I think we've begun to understand that healthy expression of feelings is a very, very good thing. Okay, so what do you suggest is the best way to parent now? Well, I think a lot of the research has, has come back to what we'd call authoritative or perhaps connected or attuned parenting, which is a mixture of uh, love, connection, attunement and a lot of support for our children, as well as having firm and kind and loving boundaries. So kids need a, a mix of both. They need to feel that we delight in them and that we're so happy to be with them and see them. And we also need to have those beautiful, clear and firm no's because children need those containers to push up against often to understand how the world works, but also to know, you know, that we're there to actually guide them. Okay, let's use a real world example. How can you use connected parenting during a bedtime meltdown? Yes, well, I have to firstly just say, bedtime meltdowns are very common and they're actually not a bad thing. And what I mean by that is, when you look at a little kiddo who goes throughout their day, you know, lots of things happen to them, they often end up having this emotional backpack with a whole lot of feelings. And then when it gets to night time, when they're tired and, you know, when their defences are let down, a lot of the time those feelings come bubbling up. So when they're saying, you know, I want, you know, another book or I need another teddy, that is where we actually can come in with a really kind and firm loving boundary where we actually say no mate you know we're not going to have that now and then we allow them to push up against that boundary and kind of offload those feelings of outrage or upset and what that usually does is it kind of unloads that backpack that emotional you know holding that they've got which allows their body to reset helps them to relax and then we're more likely to end up going to sleep well so sometimes holding those beautiful loving kind boundaries particularly at night time is really really important. I'm hearing a lot of words that I'm not understanding. So pushing up against boundaries and holding them out, I, I don't understand. So do you say no, go to bed, yeah, be quiet yeah. or not? Well, I, I think what we do is we say, you know, I'm not willing for you to do that. It's a no, but you can tell me how you feel about it. So for 